Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Wireless Technology. In this tutorial, we will discuss about the functions of RLC layer. Now, since there are too many concepts included in this topic of RLC layer functions, we will cover this tutorial in two parts. In the first part, that is in this tutorial, we will talk about the basic functions of RLC layer, the architecture of RLC layer, and the different entities involved in it. So, let's start. Let's look at the list of functions performed by the RLC layer. Transfer of upper layer PDUs. Error correction through ARC. Concatenation, segmentation and reassembly of RLC SDUs. Resegmentation of RLC PDUs. In sequence delivery of upper layer PDUs. Duplicate detection and RLC SDU discard. Protocol error detection and recovery. So these are the functions performed by the RLC layer. Basically, the functions of the RLC layer are performed by RLC entities. There's an RLC entity configured at the E node B that communicates with its peer RLC entity configured at UE to perform data transfer functions. Let's have a look at the RLC architecture to have a better picture. So this is the architecture of RLC layer. As you can see, the RLC layer consists of RLC entities which are configured to perform data transfer functionality. An RLC entity can be configured in one of the three modes. These modes are transparent mode, unacknowledged mode and acknowledged mode. And therefore, an RLC entity is categorized as transparent mode RLC entity, unacknowledged mode RLC entity and acknowledged mode RLC entity depending on the RLC mode used for data transfer. So if you see this diagram, the transparent mode RLC entity can be configured either as transmitting or a receiving RLC entity. When it is configured as a transmitting entity, it receives the RLC SDUs from the upper layer and sends it as RLC PDUs via the lower layers to its peer receiving RLC entity. And when it is configured as a receiving entity, it delivers the RLC PDUs to the upper layers that it receives from its peer entity via lower layers. Similarly, the unacknowledged mode RLC entity is also configured either as a transmitting or a receiving RLC entity. And the PDU transfer works the same way as transparent mode RLC entity. Now in case of acknowledged mode RLC entity, as you can see here, it consists of a separate transmitting and receiving side, unlike the other two modes where the entity can be configured as either transmitting or receiving entity at a time. So summarizing the overall picture, the RLC entity receives RLC SDUs from the upper layers, which is PDCP or RRC layer via a service access point, which is then sent as RLC PDU to the lower layers, that is MAC layer via a logical channel. This RLC PDU is delivered to the peer RLC entity. Similarly, an RLC entity also receives an RLC PDU from its peer RLC entity. The RLC PDU can be a data PDU received from PDCP or a control PDU received from RRC. The RLC SDUs can be of variable size and they are converted to RLC PDUs for transmission only when the lower layer notifies about a transmission opportunity. Now let's describe each of the RLC entities that we just saw in the architecture in more detail. Let's start with the transparent mode RLC entity. So this is a transparent mode model that shows the peer RLC entities at UE and E node B. The transparent mode entity is configured to transmit or receive the RLC PDUs through the logical channels. The transparent mode is generally used for common signaling purpose, hence it uses the logical channels BCCH, PCCH and CCCH. Let's look at the transmitting entity part. When the RLC SDU is received from the upper layer via service access point, the entity forms an RLC PDU out of it but does not segment or concatenate the RLC SDU. It does not even include any header to the RLC PDU formed. 
So when the receiver receives the PDU, it is delivered to the upper layer transparently. So a transparent delivery of the RLC PDU or simply we can say a transparent delivery of RLC STU takes place at the receiving end. The transmission buffer here at the transmitting side is used to buffer the incoming RLC SDUs from the upper layers before being transmitted further. The PDU transmitted by this transparent mode RLC entity is referred as TMD PDU. Now let's take a look at the unacknowledged mode RLC entity model. Now the unacknowledged mode entity is configured to transmit or receive the RLC PDUs through logical channels such as downlink and uplink dedicated traffic channel, uplink common control channel and multicast traffic and control channel. The PDU transmitted or received by the unacknowledged mode RLC entity is referred as UMD PDU. In unacknowledged mode, when the transmitting entity receives an RLC SDU from the upper layer, it performs segmentation or concatenation of the RLC SDUs. This is done so that the SDUs fits within the total size of the RLC PDU. The PDU size is indicated by the lower layer when it notifies a particular transmission opportunity. A relevant header is also included to the RLC PDU before transmission. Now at the receiving side, when the entity receives the RLC PDUs or UMD PDUs, it performs certain functions before delivering the PDUs to the upper layer. The entity will first detect whether there are any duplicate PDUs received. In case any duplication is detected, then it shall be discarded by the entity. It will then reorder the PDUs according to the sequence number if the PDUs are received out of sequence. Then the RLC header is removed. The PDUs now contain only the data fields after the removal of header, which are then reassembled into SDUs. After reassembly, the SDUs are delivered to the upper layer in ascending order of sequence number. Any PDUs which cannot be reassembled into RLC SDU are discarded. One thing to note here is that the HARC reordering is not applicable for the data received in multicast channels MCCH and MTCH. Now coming to the acknowledged mode RLC entity, this is how the structure looks like. The acknowledged mode RLC entity is configured to transmit or receive the RLC PDUs through logical channels such as DTCH and DCCH in downlink and uplink. The acknowledged mode transfers data PDUs and control PDUs. Data PDUs are referred as AMD PDU and control PDUs are referred as status PDU. At the transmitting side, the RLC SDUs in transmission buffer received from the upper layer is segmented or concatenated so that the AMD PDU fits within the total size of the RLC PDU indicated by the lower layer. In case the AMD PDU formed after segmentation and concatenation does not fit the RLC PDU size, then the AMD PDU can be further resegmented, which are referred as AMD PDU segments. There is no limit in the number of resegmentation that can be done. The transmitting size of the acknowledged mode RLC entity supports retransmission of RLC PDUs, hence the RLC PDUs are placed in retransmission buffer for retransmission. If a positive acknowledgement or ACK is received, then the data in the retransmission buffer is cleared. And if a negative acknowledgement is received, then the transmitting entity schedules a retransmission. The AMD PDU or AMD PDU segments are appended with relevant headers before transferring it to the lower layer. Now at the receiving side of the acknowledged mode RLC entity, it detects for any duplicate PDUs received, which upon detection, the PDUs can be discarded. It then reorders the PDUs if they are received out of sequence. After reordering, it detects any loss of RLC data PDUs at lower layers so that it can request for retransmission to its peer entity. Then the header is removed and the SDUs are reassembled and delivered to the upper layers. 
A status PDU which indicates ACK or NAC is sent by the receiving entity to acknowledge the PDUs received and to indicate the missing PDUs or PDU segments. Now let's discuss about the different data transfer procedures. We know that the RLC can be configured in one of the three modes to perform the data transfer procedure. They are transparent mode, unacknowledged mode and acknowledged mode. The selected mode of operation controls the applicability and functionality of error correction, concatenation, segmentation, resegmentation, duplicate detection and in sequence delivery. So let's talk about these data transfer modes in more detail. First is the transparent mode. This mode is used when using an unreliable service which does not require any retransmission. It is sometimes regarded as null RLC since it does not modify the content and simply passes through. It means that the RLC layer does not add any header or overhead to the content. It does not perform segmentation or concatenation of the data either. It just transfers fixed size SDUs to the lower layers or upper layers without any modifications. And none of the major RLC functions are applicable to this mode. The only operation it performs is buffering of data, where it simply keeps the input data in its buffer for certain amount of time and discards the data if it is not transmitted within that time frame. It is mostly used in common signaling channels such as BCCH, PCCH and CCCH. Next is the unacknowledged mode data transfer mode. The unacknowledged mode is also used when using an unreliable service which does not require retransmissions. This mode is typically used for time sensitive services and real time applications such as voice over IP or VOIP which are error tolerant but delay intolerant. It means that for services like VOIP if some error occurs in transmission of data it can be acceptable but delay is unacceptable or intolerable since it is a real time service and will affect the user experience. Now for data transfer procedures the unacknowledged mode RLC performs various functions that we discussed previously. The transmitting site performs functions such as segmentation, concatenation and adding RLC header. And the receiving site performs functions such as reordering of received RLC PDUs, RLC header removal and reassembly of RLC SDUs. Let's see one example of the data transfer in unacknowledged mode. These are the transmitting and receiving sites of an unacknowledged mode data transfer. Let's consider an example where the PDUs numbered from 1 to 10 are waiting for transmission in the transmission buffer. The PDUs are given a sequence number in ascending order before transmitting. Now there's a transmission window maintained by the transmitting entity within which the PDUs are transmitted in sequence. There's also a reception window maintained by the receiving entity which receives the PDUs. These received PDUs may be out of sequence and needs to be reordered according to the sequence number. And upon reception of the PDUs, they are reassembled as SDUs and delivered to the upper layers. Let's consider that PDUs 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are transmitted at a given time within a transmission window. And let's assume that the receiver receives PDUs 1, 2, 4 and 5 while the PDU 3 is missing. So the receiver now waits for the missing PDU 3. It waits for a certain amount of time which is defined by a timer known as T reordering. The receiving entity starts reordering the PDUs according to their sequence number and starts the reordering timer where it waits for the missing PDU to be received. The received PDUs cannot be forwarded for reassembly until the reordering timer is expired or stopped as the PDU 3 is missing and the reordering is incomplete. Now suppose the PDU3 is received through HARC protocol retransmission before the reordering timer expires. 
So the receiving entity will now forward the PDUs for reassembly into SDUs and the SDUs are delivered to the upper layer. The reordering timer is stopped after receiving the missing PDU and the reception window is advanced. The transmitter shall now transmit the remaining PDUs 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 over a new transmission window. Now let's assume that the receiver receives the PDUs 6, 8, 9 and 10 and the PDU 7 is missing. So similar to the previous case, the receiver starts the reordering timer for PDU 7. Now suppose that in this case the reordering timer expires before receiving the PDU 7. The receiver shall detect the PDU 7 as lost and the rest of the PDUs are forwarded for reassembly into SDUs and delivered to the upper layer. Also if any PDU that is received again in the same reception window is discarded as duplicate. This is the duplicate detection feature of the RLC where the PDU is identified by its sequence number similar to the reordering function. So guys, we will end this tutorial here. The next topic will be the data transfer in acknowledged mode along with few other important concepts of RLC layer which we will discuss in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.